Welcome to Growing Bremerton Together with Mayor Patty Lent. My three guests today are two council members, Dino Davis and Jerry McDonald, and the manager of Access Television, Shar Burnett. We're going to learn about their beginning and their retirement from city council and city employees. Stay with us. Welcome to Growing Bremerton Together and Mayor Patty Lent. I have three wonderful guests today, and we're all saying farewell to our current positions with the City of Bremerton. We have Council Members Jerry McDonald, and we have Council Member Dino Davis, and then we have actually the manager of Access Television. And since December is the end of our tenure with the city, we're going to find out a little bit about that background. So, hello. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Mayor. Hello. Thank you, Mayor. Jerry, you're closest to me. And the audience would like to know where you were born and grew up and a little bit about you in three minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I was born in Tacoma, St. Joseph Hospital. Mm -hmm. I uh, basically was raised in University Place before University Place was University Place. And, uh, and I went to the University of Washington and uh, graduated uh, on time because if I didn't graduate on time, I'd have been drafted. And I, Those uh, times. Yes, it, it was. And I uh, uh, was an ROTC, and I, I ended up going to NAV school. And I was a uh, crew member on a B-52 after I finished NAV school in electronic warfare officer school. Did a couple of tours in Vietnam. Uh, and then went to pilot training because they changed the, the, the pilot training rules during the war. So uh, I was able, to, early I, I, my eyes weren't good enough to fly. Mm -hmm. So, but mm -hmm. they changed the rules, and I was able to do that. And then I went to pilot training, and uh, ended up in Colorado Springs flying T-29s and 131s. And then they got rid of the, the recips, and I ended up uh, flying C-130s in, to, in the Philippines. And then, uh, when that tour was over, I ended up at McCord in, uh, in a rated supplement job. And then I ended up flying uh, C-130s at McCord. Retired, and. Uh, Flew for American for a month. Didn't have enough flying time. How long were you with Commercial Airline? About 13 years. 13 years? And when did you move to Bremerton? Uh, 2005, we moved out of my house in Olympia. We sold it, uh, April 15th, actually. And uh, we lived in our motorhome for a year and a half because the condos weren't built. He's one of our condo residents, and they were built because of the fast ferry? He's got a little story to tell you later. So anyway, we, uh, I ended up, uh, w we bought the condo, and the, uh, the condos weren't done until <laughs> April or uh, August of uh, 2007. So uh, as I said, we, we toured around the U U.S. a little bit and then lived in it for, for a while. So uh, And then uh, ended up moving. And we were the second ones to move into the condos, and uh, we bought it the when the market was up Hot here, high. And, uh, <laughs> and then it went down way down here, and uh, we're going to learn about why you ran for office. Yes, so, okay. there's a, a good story. <coughs> Shar, how many years have you worked for the city? Uh, Mayor, I have worked for the city of Bremerton <coughs> for 37 years. I was six when I started <laughs> working for the city. Um, actually, I was born. I'm a Chicago girl mm -hmm. through and through. Um, went to Western Illinois University and realized when I left Chicago and went to the little tiny farm town, much like Ellensburg, that I was never going to go back to Chicago again. I knew I wanted more. I wanted to go west. I wanted to live in California and live that dream. And I spent two years in San Diego, and the best thing that happened to me there was I met my husband. Mm -hmm. um, San Diego was a great place to be, especially as a single person and have a lot of fun, but everyone there was like me. Boston, Chicago, New York, we were all going to Southern California mm -hmm. thinking it was Nirvana, that mm -hmm. it was heaven. <laughs> and it really was for a couple of years. And then I just said, I came home one day and said, I gotta get out of here. I can't stand, not, I didn't have a job in my field. Um, and my then boyfriend, now my husband of 35 years, said, let's go check out the Northwest. He had an aunt and uncle in Port Orchard, and we arrived here in 1979. Mm -hmm. Best thing we've ever done. 
That's good for us, isn't it? <laughs> Thanks, Sharon. Um, and Dino, yes, where were you? Where'd you begin? <clears throat> well, I was born at Northwest Hospital in Seattle, mm -hmm. and grew up in South Snohomish County in a few various spots around there. Graduated from Cascade High School in Everett, and uh, have had a couple of different <coughs> careers. Mm -hmm. I started. Uh, as a tradesman in my father's construction company and did that until I met my now wife mm -hmm. uh, and we decided that it was time to do something a little different so I went into information technology and worked for some high profile companies through uh, the late 90s and 2000s and when that started to ebb uh, I decided that I wanted to stay in my community. I'd been commuting to Seattle all that time. And we moved here in 2001. Mm -hmm. And until I got a job working for a, a company that was local, I didn't really appreciate how beautiful and how diverse our uh, neighborhood really is. And but it wasn't too beautiful in 2000. So. <laughs> True. You have a lot to do with where we are True. today. Um, How old is your house, Dino? My home was built in 1921 mm -hmm. and is very close to Naval Elementary. Mm -hmm. uh, we are the third owners of the home, wow. which is wow. pretty spectacular. Yeah, cool. Yes. Really cool. And uh, when I left technology and got involved in, in real estate, my current position, I'm a real estate broker with Windermere, and uh, through that experience uh, I wanted to get involved in more of the policy and guiding the direction of how we were going to expand on this bow wave of, of growth that we were starting to see. Mm -hmm. uh, this would have been in about 2009-2010 when people were starting to make plans for where we are today economically. Mm -hmm. And so I joined the Board of Realtors and through that, uh, my wife got tired of my complaining about <laughs> uh, what I saw as uh, opportunities for success, shall we say, with the city. <laughs> and she convinced me to uh, step up and, and join the Bremerton City Council. And mm -hmm. so running for office, something I'd never done before, uh, knocking on doors. And, and uh, it's been a fantastic experience. I'm so glad I did it. One of the nice things is that because you're still a realtor and our council members can have day jobs um, because it isn't a full-time job as a council member, but you sold our chief of police his house. That was <laughs> before I was a member of the city council, so right. no appearance of impropriety, but no. that is how I met uh, the Strands, and that mm -hmm. has developed into a fantastic relationship. Mm -hmm. so. Some great things. Yes. So, um, again, your wife... Um, we're going to come back around. Your wife yes. convinced you to be um, to run for office. Yes. Um, that in itself is a lot of turmoil. <laughs> but having done it, yes. what do you feel that was some of your accomplishments while you were on council for this term? Well, I joined council to improve my direct sphere of influence. Mm -hmm. The uh, Callow area, District 5, is my, my spot. And we made some great strides there. We were able to bring back the flower baskets and yes. beautify the street with your help mm -hmm. and the Parks Department help. And, and that's really the key is once you start to get some small success and build these relationships within the city government, great things can happen. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, it may not seem like a huge procedural thing, but it it just is such an impact of these small things that we do and they lead to larger things than uh, right. as my you know I coming from a construction background I worked on public works mm -hmm. my entire time on on council and mm -hmm. was twice chair and we were able to rebuild lower uh, Wheaton Way mm -hmm. and we won an award for that yes, that was very exciting um, I got to accept the award, even though I just kept nodding and saying, that is a really good idea, because we have some incredible engineers and people that are out there doing the work every day, and uh, you know, they're world class. Besides and your being a realtor and being a council member, yes. um, you expanded on a statewide level. Yes. Association of Washington Cities, there are 281 cities in the, ca in the state, and it covers all realms of things that we want to do within our own city. You were really, um, you went to all of the conferences, yes. did some advanced training, um, so you brought some of that expertise back to the board. Well, I felt 
as uh, a neophyte when I began, mm -hmm. um, you know, the best way to learn is to engage peers. Mm -hmm. And so through the AWC program, uh, I was able to make some great friendships that will last long past this experience. Um, I was able to learn the proper way to discuss your your legislative <laughs> agenda and engage uh, our, our lobbyist, Brian McConaughey, was instrumental in uh, getting me into some, some really important uh, hearings mm -hmm. on, on legislation. Mm -hmm. That was very important. And it also uh, led me to be more involved at Puget Sound Regional Coordinating Council. Yes. Which... You were um, our economic development. And transportation policy. Right. And, and those are very, very important. Mm -hmm. And to be... To continue to be a regional player, uh, we need to be engaged in these in these NGOs mm -hmm. and and make sure the Kitsap experience is not only defended and grown but evangelized. Because throughout we're the a region. smaller county from Kit from King, Pierce, and Snohomish, we have to have that voice at the table. Yes, and you were terrific at that. Well, Today they all said goodbye. To, it was our last meeting of the year at PSRC and. He'll be over there for the executive committee tomorrow. Yes. Char, you. you didn't start with um, BCAT or Access mm -hmm. Television. Mm -hmm. So when you were six and you were in the <laughs> in the um, Parks Department. Seems like yesterday. <laughs> it was yesterday. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you've had, you've really worked in so many departments that I think it gave you the confidence to be in front of the camera mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. well as management mm -hmm. and um, to take us throughout the city and the entire county. Mm -hmm. I did start in Parks and Recreation. I have a very strong, I had a very strong aquatics background. Mm -hmm. And I taught, I walked into then our city pool, Jarstead Aquatic Center, and started working immediately. And then, of course, I got to meet folks in the Parks Office, and I had a degree, so they kind of grabbed me. And I worked for the Parks and Recreation Department for 25 years. Mm. And it was total joy. I would have never left there, but then Mayor Lynn Horton um, in the year 1999 um, opened a municipal services coordinator position and it had my name all over it yes. and it was a fun, fun job. I coordinated our city centennial, mm -hmm. which was really a lot of fun, a lot of work, um, but it was really fun. And then Mayor Bozeman got elected and he said, I think you'd be really good out at the TV channel. And I <laughs> said, okay, <laughs> I'll do that. Um, so I came out here. I had been involved with BCAT mm -hmm. as someone on TV promoting parks and recreation. Come sign up for swim classes. We've got softball starting, uh, senior center things. So I was confident in front of the uh, camera, but I had never led interviews and done that. So it was learned by doing. But um, I came to BCAT in 2001, mm -hmm. and it has been a big change, but what I learned was surround yourself with really excellent people mm -hmm. and people that know this technology and the folks here do. And it's just been a joy. I've blossomed where I was planted, and I'm proud of that. You'll learn that each one of us, um, especially the, the other th my three guests, um, 2000, 2001 is it when they really got involved in what we're saying goodbye to today. Mm -hmm. So Jerry, again, why did you think that an elected position would be the next phase of your career path? I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Who talked you into it? I don't know. When, you know, when we moved here in, in Bremerton, as I said, we moved in in 2007. I'd seen what was going on in 2007, 2008 was when things weren't, Hot. So, weren't very good. And I just decided that, you know, maybe <coughs> I should get out and do something. And I had, I had started, you look at the downtown, what it is, what it's turning into today and what it was mm -hmm. back in the 2007, 2008, mm -hmm. and it's changed a lot. It's still changing. And there's so much that needs to be done, but we're, we're getting there. And he used to come to city council meetings and he'd say, why doesn't this council just give me one or two thousand dollars so that I can get more tourists to come here? He wanted to raise the exposure and the engagement of the city. And because we were in the recession, didn't have much money, he thought the tourist season 
and, and the people coming here to visit would spend some money and get us on our star. And now that he's on council, he's learned that it isn't easy to carve out a $2,000 bill anytime <laughs> you want it. But you did some great things. You started a program with the concierge in Seattle. Yeah. And that's got your name on it. So how did you do that? And I know it was very successful for the city. We, uh, I don't know, somehow I got involved with the concierge. They, uh, I, I went to something in Seattle and, and uh, found out that the concierge have, have a, uh, an association. So I approached them and they f I found out that they come and visit the different destinations mm -hmm. so they can talk intelligently about uh, this, these, the cities and destinations mm -hmm. that, that they talk to their uh, guest about. And so, I don't remember which year, probably 2010 or 11, 12, I don't know, somewhere in there. More like l about 10, I, uh, 11. We made arrangements and we had uh, several, I don't remember how many people we had, on it, but we, we, we went over, picked them up on the ferry and brought them over here. We had about 15 or 20, Concierge. and you've done this four times or five times? Yeah, in fact, I think we're going to do it again this next year, too. They had um, <laughs> champagne and pizza at the conference center. They walked <laughs> the streets. Um, they were catered by some of our fine restaurants. They got to see the things that were happening and the beautification, the flower baskets. Um, it really was an, a new thing, but through Jerry as well, a, a map was made. It's a Seattle map that gets people where they want to go in Seattle. And with the cruise business, that map is handed out. And he got them to put on the other side of that map, Bremerton. It showed the ferry. It showed what you could see in Bremerton. And so you really were able to take and get those tourists here. Yeah, we did pretty well. And uh, still, there's got to be something to, to come to. And that's, that's part of the things why... Uh, why, why I've, been, I've been peddling as well as, as fast <laughs> as I have been because, you know, and, and as I said, only now is when things are starting to happen. They are. 4th Street is just changing right now in front of your nose. <laughs> and, uh, you know, in Burwell, we've got apartments. We've got almost 12,000 housing units coming to town nice. in the next two years. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, that is going to do nothing more than to blossom the city mm -hmm. sooner. To get the city to grow, um, do you know when you were, um, some of the things that you did for council was to change, and we had to rescind our 2004 comp plan. Um, we had areas where we wouldn't allow people to drive through. Um, we had stifled some of the growth. Yes. And so you really said we need to make some changes in order to invite people to get our businesses started. And so internally that's what council does they make those rules and regulations and all the laws that govern um, housing and permitting and the things that are really f just popping right now so yes. those are things that have started the the difference that we've got because all the housing that's coming through winco the theater the things that we enjoy today mm -hmm. had to have a start right mm -hmm. and i'm really proud of uh the way council and uh, the Department of uh, Community Development's been able to work together. Andrea Spencer is really a shining star. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we as a collective kind of pushed that way uh, when you're talking about the rezoning uh, of the Wheaton Way mm -hmm. uh, commercial zone. But it was really that department that uh, truly believes that their planning documents don't just sit on a shelf. They're mm -hmm. living and breathing documents that they need to be reviewed. And, and times change. And in the run-up to uh, just before the rug got yanked out from, <laughs> from uh, underneath us, the idea of uh, having these cart paths and uh, town center, new urbanist mm -hmm. style design was all the rage. Uh, unfortunately, through an economic downturn and what came out on the other side, it's no longer, uh, not only is it no longer economically feasible, it's also no longer fashionable. Right. And so to have the agility and leadership, both from your office mm -hmm. and from the, the crew that you've put together, was really instrumental in being able to do that change. And we saw immediately a redevelopment in that sector. We saw mm -hmm. Kitsap Bank. Starbucks mm -hmm. invest a, a large amount of money into that corridor mm -hmm. uh, to bring back uh, a vitality that was desperately needed. In we school. also, um, in council, 
they were able to take and during that downturn and when banks were closing and houses were foreclosed, um, we needed to say, gosh, we need some ordinances that will get the people to take care of those slum properties. Instrumental, again, DCD, yes. it took them a year to put together um, two different ordinances that have made a big difference in how our neighborhoods look today. And mm -hmm. being a realtor, you're yes. seeing all the people moving in and making changes. Yes, it's and this past summer, it was unbelievable the demand uh, four or five times outstripped the amount of inventory that we had. Mm -hmm. uh, we were seeing multiple offers, um, people being unfortunately squeezed out mm -hmm. uh, that wanted to live in mm -hmm. Bremerton. And, you know, the word is out. Bremerton is a fantastic place. And those of us, like my wife and I, that moved here in 2001, uh, we came because I was working downtown and real estate was very, very affordable. And we had the fast ferry. Yes. Then we lost it. <laughs> now the ferry is back. back. And uh, I, it's just an amazing way to be able to to get to your job if that works for you and your we family. We haven't had a cancellation of any of the fast ferry since October, so we're, we're on the mend. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking about um, things that you've done, Char, the Parks Department is really not just when you worked for so many years, <coughs> but the 35 parks that we have are instrumental in our quality of life mm -hmm. here. Absolutely. And so we, we feed kids in the summertime, we've got summer programs. Um, and because you have a program that you do, and you take us all over the county, but you find little niches, <laughs> uh, of someone that does a work in his garage. Tell us about a couple of interesting things that we'd never know about if you hadn't taken the camera on site. <laughs> well, you know, I think I was just talking off camera before we started about the new business right next to um, our Norm Dick's Government Center. Mm -hmm. It's called Tudor Roses, and it really is a beautiful spot. It's an old um, Tudor-style mm -hmm. home with a turret, and it is, uh, I think, built in the early 1900s. Mm -hmm. Absolutely beautiful. But then also, one of the really cool programs we did was looking at our fountains mm -hmm. and going down in the guts how they and work. see how, mm -hmm. how they work and how the Parks Department has to maintain these fantastic water features. Mm -hmm. That was really cool. I, I just loved it. And then um, a woman who has frog soap. Before she had a storefront, we went to her house because she came up to me during a Green Drinks, which Green Drinks is a networking um, event. She came up to me and started talking to me about her soap making business. And I was like, well, let's talk about it. <laughs> so those are the those are the fun ones. Just to talk about her for a minute, she takes used French fry oil from all the different restaurants. Mm -hmm. That's the only oil she uses. She is a chemist. Yes, she does she all the pH and makes lavender and peach and all kinds of different mm -hmm. soaps. Mm -hmm. She has a storefront right next to the Admiral Theater. Mm -hmm. And um, yep, that's a fun business mm -hmm. to watch. Those are unique things in the city. Yeah. Mayor, if I could just w add one more thing. One of the biggest joys I had was before we had our studio here at our BCAT office, mm -hmm. our studio was in the Comcast building, mm -hmm. which was really hard for us to do our work. We had ministered here, but then we would have to go down to the Comcast building on Sylvan and do our programming and our playback system. Dee Dee Beckley and Tony White. Tony passed away a few years ago and Dee Dee is a little elderly now. She graduated from high school in 1951. Yep. <laughs> and she, those two would come into the studio uh, on a quarterly basis and talk about what's going on downtown and the arts and um, Tony had a gallery downtown. But those two would come in costume and just <laughs> props and just we would just laugh. It, it's one of the biggest joys of my, <laughs> of my whole uh, time here at BCAT. They were Those are legacies that mm -hmm. we're not going to lose as we move forward in the future. Mm -hmm. Jerry, one of yours is going to be that permanent stage down on the boardwalk. Um, I know that you worked very hard to make sure that that was going to happen and rock the docks. That's something that you um, kind of initiated and um, again to bring those tourists and bring residents down to enjoy it. Um, what else would you say is something that you're kind of leaving behind? Well, continue on with the rock the dock thing. It's, we wanted to make it a, a uh, 
regional music event, mm -hmm. and we've been doing that for four or five years, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Mm -hmm. It's getting there. We've got the permanent stage now, and uh, it's it's still not where I want to see it. We need more more sponsorship and. But it's there, but and it's it's, it's there. got a foundation. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, our festivals are pretty good. We've got just about weekly festivals in the summertime. Yeah, and so that's one way of, of really showing off the city. Um, and Olympic College is another one that oh, yes. um, they've done some great things. And I know that you've been to many graduations there. And Well, I, as I mentioned earlier, I, I have a, a somewhat of a background in aviation. Yes. And uh, <laughs> I found out that OC had previously had a pilot training class, and about, oh, four years ago mm -hmm. or so, I was reading this article, and it says uh, <coughs> we're going to be a half million pilot shortage in the next 15 to 20 years, and I said, hmm, very interesting, and, and then you look at the mechanic side, and that was 600 or 650,000 short, and Today it's about seven hundred and fifty thousand short on the mechanics and six hundred and fifty on the on the pilots. Wow. Things aren't getting better; they're getting worse. And we don't have students trained, and so we. This is one thing that you've talked about, not only at the Port of Bremerton but at Olympic College yep. and Evergreen College. Yep. Uh, or Green River. So we started talking about uh, <coughs> trying to get reestablished that uh, pilot training class, mm -hmm. and I had. A lot of people, we've had a couple of meetings, several meetings about that. I've uh, been working with Dr. Mitchell. Now he's checking out, so i got to start <laughs> up a new guy. But uh, that's okay. But uh, they, w they had been working very closely with Green River Community College. And uh, so essentially everything is all put together. we just got to get the okay and maybe a, little do a few dollars to, to make mm -hmm. this thing happen. But the... Uh, <coughs> Avian Flight Center is going to, will we'll teach the classes, and uh, Green River Community College will, will sponsor it. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it, it, with, the, with the absolute demand and need that's there, uh, I don't see that their answer it can't any, be anything less than yes. You're right. So, or, or, or <laughs> you're not going to be flying when you want it. <laughs> um, we, we learned that in the news with American Airlines. They had some pilots on vacation that yeah. might have canceled. Um, as we all depart from what we're currently doing, um, this city is pretty magnetic. And I know we're not actually leaving. Um, Dino is actually, when he retires at the end of this month, he's going to be on our um, planning commission. I have made... An application. An application. It'll be up to council. Have the council. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But again, um, it's something that doesn't take uh, so much of his time as council, but he can still be involved, um, use his talents. So you're going to see more of Dino. Um, Shar's going to be traveling. She's got some grandchildren, and mm -hmm. you have one son that just was the star mm -hmm. of Sea Stock. Mm -hmm. He's That's in my our grandson. audience today. Yeah, my mm -hmm. grandson and granddaughter live here, but. Uh, Mayor, I am going to take the first six months after I leave employment with the city to clear my head. Mm -hmm. And my husband and I bought a trailer, and we're just going to wander. But I'll be back. Yeah. I'll be back. And number one, you'll see me at the Admiral Theater. I plan to volunteer there. Yes. Um, and then see what else. I'd like to help my grandkids at school, and kids need help. Mm -hmm. We, Our children need help. Um, all kids in Bremerton, so I'm going to probably get involved there as well. And your next phase? I don't know for sure. Get I on the committee for that flight school. Yeah, Work I'd with the port and, and get us going because well, yeah, you have a strong voice. That's, that's going to happen, I'm sure. I, I don't know how quickly, but uh, it'll happen. I mean, it, it's got to happen because... <laughs> and you a have a, a either a motorhome or a trailer, I, I so you're going to be traveling. I, we we do have a motor home, <laughs> and yes, I'm. That's what I'm supposed to be. That's one of the reasons <laughs> I retired to be in the motor home. Good. <laughs> At least that's what my boss tells me. So. Um, and and yes. what about your plans? Ben? And my plans. I'm going to take um, three months, do a little traveling with my husband, and then um, I'll resurface. Um, as you can tell, just from our conversation today, um, it's Bremerton that is the common denominator. 
It's what you moved here for or you work here. And all of us that have left fingerprints and the things that we're most proud of, um, you're going to see us throughout as we age and we um, grow old and make this the continued home that we wanted to move here for. I want to thank each of you for being my guests. And um, you're not going to put anything private there, so you can't get a hold of them. But um, <laughs> you'll see them in the, in the, in the community. So um, again, thank you for being my guests. And thank you, audience, for eight years of monthly meetings, monthly visions about all the things happening as we grow together. And your mayor, Patty Lynn.